Good evening and welcome to our second masterclass of the 2017 Tradewise Gibraltar Chess Festival. And with me, a very special guest. Thank you so much for um, agreeing to do this, Yifan. The reigning Pleasure. women's world champion, who are Yifan? Hi. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Welcome back to Gibraltar. Your third visit to The Rock. Uh, yeah, my third time to play here and uh, probably also my third time to do with a masterclass. Yeah, we were just talking about that, whether you did... Uh, I remember one of the offsets we did uh, two years ago, last yeah, time we came. Yeah, two years ago, I yeah. remember I was showing you a very interesting game, but that game was ending in a draw, actually. Right. I remember that was quite an interesting one, and uh, I don't really remember whether I did the first time, but probably, but it's like, yeah. uh, you know, five years ago. Long time ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Better just start with the new one. So you have, um, you won a nice game today, which is the game you're going to show us, mm -hmm. right? So you got three and a half out of four, so good start. And you've played four uh, women, that's amazing. <laughs> you found you've played four women so far. How is that possible? Yeah, I, I'm also wondering how that possible. How <laughs> is it impossible? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, of course, my result was kind of okay. I cannot mm. comply, it, although it's not something dramatically good. And of course, I was hoping for more interesting games and a more, uh, like, uh, you know, like uh, quite uh, exciting tournaments for the next uh, six games. Right, okay. So you're going to show your game. So yesterday you drew with Anna Muzicic. Yeah. Correct. So today it's a sister. And you played her sister. Now, of course, you and Maria played a World Championship match um, not too long ago. Uh, like almost a year ago. Right, it's already a year ago. Is it? Yeah, crumbs, yeah. So you must have studied each other's games and you must know each other's uh, you know, style of play and everything uh, quite yeah. deeply. You know, after that match, the preparation for that match? Yeah, of course, so we did some preparation for the opening. That's uh, any kind of serious match the players, the participants will do. But um, yeah. speaking, um, after the match, uh, we I think we didn't play any single game. So this is the first time we play like first after time a year. Match. Yeah. Great. OK, so off we go. Let's have a look at the game. So this is <laughs> Yifan against Maria. So we're going to start again. Sure. Uh, knight f3, d5. Yeah, okay, this, I, before the game I was just trying to avoid some long theories. Uh, um, I mean, just want to try to get a real game as soon as possible. So that's mm. why I decided to play such a, I mean, just a setup. And during the match, uh, when I was white, uh, there was a game I played, I think, G3. And uh, that game was continued with uh, G6, sharp G2, sharp G7 here. During that game, I was trying an interesting move, Queen A4. Mm. And um, okay, her pr home preparation was quite good. She reacted immediately to this D takes C4, Queen takes C4. And the E5, that game she was doing quite well. Right. And uh, later on, she also had this uh, interesting homework preparation, this Knight A6. Um, quite an interesting move and uh, a dip with a deep idea. And this game was ended in a draw, actually, without without a real battle. I mean, right. both of the players just went to a very solid variation. So you had nothing from the opening in that mm, game? No, not really. OK, <laughs> maybe same as today. Actually, today I also got nothing from the opening. And I decided <laughs> to try this move B3, OK. And uh, knight f6, bishop g2, bishop g4, e3, knight bd7. Uh, so it's kind of like a slap variation, right. where I believe that the black actually in slightly favor compared to the normal variation, because uh, uh, she successfully moved out the bishop. and. Uh, also, if white wants to trade with the knight, it's not so easy to achieve that. Mm. And uh, white spent two moves with the earlier b3, bishop b2. It might be useful, but uh, if you play these two moves at a very early age, maybe it could be double. I mean, double right. age. Did you prepare this line specially for the game today? <laughs> no, or not you really. just turned up and played it? Yeah, I just turned up and played it because uh, I actually the parents are from you started this morning. At breakfast, uh, yes. that's right, yeah. <laughs> so I didn't really have a lot of time to prepare for this game and uh, also... Actually, can I just say something? Sorry, because that's two days running. I've told you your opponent at breakfast, second day running. Yes. So you don't, you're, you're like me because well, when I used to play. I never used to look at the pairings before I went to bed. I used to go to sleep, go to bed, not bother about the pairings until the morning. Is that the same with you generally in this kind of tournament? Uh, well, it depends. For example, like here, some some games are finished quite late. So that's why I decided just to check next morning. And uh, yeah. mm, it really depends on the situation. All right, OK. Mm -hmm. All right, sorry, so on we go. Uh, and uh, OK, H3, sharp H5, nice C3. 
Okay, actually, from this moment, I already have some idea like G4, G5. Mm, but uh, yeah. <laughs> because you know, in such a position, if white trying to fight for something, okay, you can choose like short castle and play a long and another positional game, which uh, I did like the first two rounds with mm. D4, Knight C3. But as, as I said, when the bishop is out from the C8, the queen side, white is very difficult to get some clear advantage from the opening. So that's why I was trying to seek out for some new idea, but uh, G4 now seems like too early because uh, black will have this 94 square. So right. seems like uh, that's uh, too much for white to do that at this moment. So I played knight c3, a normal move, bishop d6. And again here, this, this move will face again the knight e4. Uh, and this h4 doesn't work because this knight on c3 and the, the bishop cannot attack g7 directly. What happens is h4 now? Um, maybe something like h6. Right, yes. Yeah, black's position is quite solid. Oh, hang on, but then you could take on e4. Uh, yes. Because sure. there's no. a tempo. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I was also considering some move like c take d5, trying to change the course of the position, but uh, mm. I think black can take with both pawns. So for example, if c take d5, it will also be fine for black because this knight b5 doesn't really bring white anything. And uh, also e take d5, I, I wasn't sure, probably I would even prefer to play with black in such positions. Really, yes. <laughs> yeah, because, um, I mean, it's not clear what white can, wants to do to achieve in those positions. I mean, if you wanted to play d4, then it would be a norm normal setup, but bishop on b2 looks a bit weird. Mm, black looks very nice. Yeah, but if you don't play d4, then I mean, black is very comfortable with castle or rookie eight and maybe c5 later on, just trying to improve the position. While mm -hmm. white is doing nothing, I mean, this knight d4, knight f5 seems like it never works. Right. I mean, it, you could achieve, but still not clear. I, I mean, black did nothing seven. wrong. Why should black be worse? Black, yes. black played normal moves. Okay, so I played d3. Mm -hmm. Well, a bit doubtful. Maybe I should just play d4 like a regular game do. Mm -hmm. But of course, I'm still having this idea like G4, so that's right. why I decided to wait for a tempo. And H6 uh, seems like a, well, it's a clever move at this moment, but uh, considering what happened later on in the game, it might be also a weakness because later yes. on, because of this H6, I could break through with G5. Right. Um, but of course, the uh, castle here seems a bit mm, provocative. Yeah, like g4, g5, and with h4, h5, uh, mm. well, complicated, but so probably white can hope for something. <laughs> and h6, now a3 is really a bit risky. I mean, normally we should play short castle and a short castle to play the structure, but of course a3. You played a3 though. Yeah, uh, I was waiting for black to play short castle, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but this move, just to wait for short castle, it looks a bit uh, too aggressive. Mm. And of course, if black want to do something, she can even start with a6 or sure. like just to keep the position quite balanced. Um, because uh, if white plays short castle, then short castle, there's, n there's nothing with attacking chances on the king side. And it's not clear what white could do mm. better than short castle because this b4, c5 doesn't really bring anything. Mm. So it's a waiting game for both people. Yeah, but uh, bit, so. we cannot say that sh short castle is. Uh, Doubtful move. Of course, this is the most accurate one. But just to say, from psychological part, probably this a s the move like a six could also be interesting. Right. Okay. So short castle. Uh, well, actually, I doubt whether it works out. I still didn't really check with the computer and mm -hmm. to see how things going on. But seems to. Did me you feel confident at this point? You felt you felt good. Mm, you felt strong. Well, of course, I I understand that I'm taking some risks. But uh, in a real chess game, actually, if you want to really to win a game, sometimes you need to, you know, to be brave and mm -hmm. trying to, trying to do something. Yeah. And the e5 seems quite natural, but also she could do the move like knight. Well, somebody I had dinner with or I met before dinner said the knight e5. I think they maybe checked with the computer. The knight e5 was the best move here. Ah, okay. But e5 looks like even a human being move because mm. trying to break the center. Okay, but knight e5 also reasonable because when white trying to create some attacks, it's better to exchange some pieces and to release the pressure. Right. And also it's not clear what white could do here because this h4 looks too exposed on the king side. Mm. And this, uh, well, f4 also. I was going to mm. say. Yeah. <laughs> well. Mm. Yeah, so maybe some queen moves and to prepare later on long castle. I have no clear idea, but we should also watch out with d4 because if the pawn structure could be 
fixed, uh, then black is clearly better. And after knight e5, you have no other option than to exchange? Mm. Knight h4 is a bad move, is it? Oh, well, knight h4, maybe just simply bishop h7. Mm. Let's say they're the simplest one. Because, of course, my idea was h4, g5, or right. h5, g5, so this knight on h4. Mm. Um, seems like uh, they're knacking of, um, you know, continuations. Yes, yeah, not very consistent. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm. so 95, yeah. What would you have done on 95? You would have exchanged? Mm, maybe think? I'll start to think uh, what to do next. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, of course, I mean, this g4, g1 cannot be just better for white. It's not, it's not reasonable. So mm. if a black re react quite accurately, of course, the white needs to be more careful. I mean, cannot say this position is uh, already bad for white, but, but so it, uh, it's the white who should be more careful in trying to equalize in such positions. So, yeah. yeah. Because, uh, as you say, nothing did wrong with black. Mm. Okay. Well you can pick queen d2. But I like your attitude if that you take. You play slightly unconventional moves, yeah. like this, like a3, and, and then you take your chance with g4, rook g1, and okay, see, and, you know, and in open tournaments you need to win games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, especially with this very interesting pairings. And nice pairings, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, I mean, this a3 is not like a useless move, because uh, as later showing the game, of we prevent some bishop b4, queen a5, like right. uh, uh, the weakness of this diagonal. Okay, e5 it actually is also quite good, because uh, H4 seems like a natural move, although I doubt um, the whole variation works or not. But mm. anyway, I have to go for it. Otherwise, uh, this uh, G4, Rook, G1 makes no sense. Of course, I was also considering the move like C take D5 and to play D4. Hang on, she couldn't play Knight takes D5 then if you did C takes D5? And Knight takes D5. But then I, I was not sure about this setup because now it's like a, like a kind of similar to the Sicilian, but uh, the uh, I mm. mean, diverse version, and uh, sometimes this g4, h4 could be worked out, like so knight e4. Knight e4. Mm. Because I was thinking this pawn structure on the center should be po powerful enough for black uh, to okay. hold at least a counterplay, but even better, because d4, for example, the simple move like rook c8. Uh, because it's uh, very hard to suggest something good for white to continue. Is knight b5 possible? Wow, there are always some... Some <laughs> problems down there, yes. Yeah, like c2. Mm, bishop c2 looks nasty. Yeah, no, it's not good. And also I was considering the move d4. Why are I always mentioning this d4 move? Because uh, during the game h4, the main concern was black's d4 here. So that's why I was considering whether I should push d4 first. But here, also, after rook e8, I mean, compared to the normal slav, it's like a white waste tempo on d3, d4, and also this a3, h3, and the black doing all the normal things to push e5 counterplay. So it mm. cannot be good for white. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why I decided <coughs> to go for this way. And the d takes c4 actually surprised me a little bit. Okay. I remember she played that quite quickly, because I was thinking about this move d4, it seems like even more like natural. Okay. Because so here we have to take this sacrifice. Yeah. All right. Okay, take. so I wasn't sure here. At first I was considering some move like knight e5, with the idea bishop c5. And maybe white can try knight f5 here, and after exchange some rook e8. And yes. maybe knight e4, I mean, with this rook on g5, bishop on b2, I could um, pressure on mm. g7. In the meantime, these this two knights cannot be too active. But but this position, definitely, black will have enough compensation by various ways. Oh, I didn't really it. calculate until the last yeah. moment, but uh, okay, I feel like it's <laughs> it could be a real game, and uh, white is taking risks, but uh, I already have no better options. But it could also be interesting some move like... Uh, so the idea of d4, sacrificing a pawn, is just to open the e-file? Uh, not only the e-file, actually the weakness is also this knight and d3 pawn. Yes. I believe this will be the main point, because the e-file, sometimes white can escape with queen moves and long castle, or even king f1 could be safe. But right. the moment is, I, I believe, black can do something. Ah, for example, maybe this move. And uh, to play knight e5, now it's very unpleasant that how to defend with this knight and this d3 pawn. Mm. Of course, it's a bit risky, I don't really sure. But at least the bishop will have this f4 square and this d3 will be unpleasant. Right, so right, yeah, interesting. 
not only Love Compensation, probably it will just reject the wise whole plan with this G4 rook G1, probably. Hmm, it does look dangerous. Yeah. But of course, I understand during the real game to make this decision with sacrifice, you need to think a little bit. So yeah. And of course, this D this D takes C4 at the first doesn't look bad for black. So she paired that quite fast, did she? Um, yeah, I'm showing here like uh, less than three minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just noticed here. Right. <laughs> okay, D takes C4. Of course, I should take with a D pawn. Okay, maybe some, some push pawns first, but anyway, D takes C4 looks normal. And knight c5. Actually, I was considering for some queen moves. Because knight c5, it always swarmed me with this weakness of e5 pawn. Mm -hmm. Maybe to play something solid like queen e7, right. or move the bishop to c7. But I believe white already could be slightly better in this position because uh, suddenly, mm, without d4, white's position is quite solid. The king on e1 is temporarily safe. And uh, yes. we could push g5, h5, sometimes preparing long castle. If white to achieve this, then it will be a, I mean, pleasant position. Mm -hmm. And knight c5. And not much danger really anymore. Yeah. Not much danger. Yeah, after d takes c4, it's a bit, a bit relaxed for the position at yes, least. Yeah. Okay, knight c5 <coughs> here, uh, play g5. Yeah, I thought this g5 move, uh, after her e4, I realized it's not so um, precise. I thought I should do better with b4 first. Because in this case, then knight goes to e6, then play g5. Now black doesn't have e4 at all. So the position will go more or less with this knight h7, knight h4. The original idea with g5. And uh, to play this uh, the position like this with the bishop c4, queen b3, or even change the queen, this king is quite exposed. Yes, it's supposed yeah. to be much better for white. Uh, this was my original intention, but unfortunately, I did with wrong move order this g5 to allow mm. the chance to play e4. But of course, first I was also considering the move like h5 and uh, to open the g file. Also looks promising, but after bishop f5, uh, I wasn't so sure what white could do because b4 might face knight e4, maybe. Oh, it's not clear, but uh, this just seems to me not as promising as the previous line where white can achieve the position like this. Right, this so looks if confused, we, yeah, right? if we can get both, uh, and then we need to make a decision. Of course, we will go for the line with uh, before. Mm, so that's why I didn't really calculate so much with the h5 move. But this g5, uh, I think. She did a very good move here, e4. Suddenly, all my plan br broke out. <laughs> yeah, because uh, sh if she plays some move like take yeah, what happens if she plays something else? Yeah, show us what happens. Oh, uh, well, you have, I believe the other option is to take, and here, there, 9h7, it's the same with b4. Or right. even I could, yeah, why I play g5 first? Because probably white has some more option with earlier 9h4. Without playing before. Yes, because uh, because in the previous lines, probably black can <coughs> take with the other knight or things like this. So, but here, maybe he has she has to take with this knight. Okay, rook g5 doesn't work because of uh, uh, queen g1 check. Mm. And if take on g6 first, also knight take b3. So I have no, cannot win the material <coughs> here, but probably with simple play, like uh, again mm. before. And uh, c5, and maybe queen b3. Mm -hmm. Looks great. Yeah, it's clearly, it looks great. clearly much better for white. So that was my idea. And also, knight e4 doesn't work here because of uh, b4. This e5 pawn, well, yeah. well, well, well lost. It's winning a pawn. Yeah. yeah. But she did quite a good move e4 which I didn't really consider when playing g5. So here I need to start thinking again, because uh, now, before never works, the knight can jump to d3. And if exchanged mm -hmm. with the bishop, suddenly this g6 bishop become, become, become strong. And also, uh, when she play e4 first, and later on change on g5, I never have this idea knight h4 take on g6. Right, that's, that's one the difference main point. of not taking on g5, yeah. you don't have that square. Yes, because if you take first, uh, mm. then the knight white could it. try knight h4, sure. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So e4 is a very precise move. The the most uh, accurate one. And here, okay, 92 seems like uh, the only way to keep the position unclear. I was even thinking something interesting like before. Wow. 
Oh, well, mm. I, I don't believe it really works out. Uh, like, it, I was hoping I'd take e2, queen d6, mm -hmm. it could be slightly better, but even some move like bishop h2, I mean, yes. <laughs> looks, <laughs> I mean, too exaggerated for white. Too many pieces attacked at the same yeah. time, yeah. And also, I'm considering like. Had you completely missed e4? It was a complete surprise when she no, played this? No, not really. Actually, I had this idea even before playing g5, like uh, earlier moves, but somehow I didn't really <coughs> calculate quite deep at this moment when she reacted mm. e4. So I kind of. Um, not blunder, but simply I ignored mm. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the e4 here. And I was also considering some move like take on f6. And take on f3 and take and rook a to sacrifice here. But um, yeah, it's just simply better for mm. black. Be because although white has um, two pounds up now, but uh, with knight d3, take back on g7, suddenly back ski is quite safe and uh, all the white pieces remain there on co on coordinated. You have to take on g6 with the rook? Uh, well, because uh, you cannot take on f3, because bishop f4 is not a move. so. Right, yeah. And also this pawn g7, suddenly black, black ki king is safe, there's no weakness on the king mm, side. So, okay, so g take f6, it doesn't work, so I play knight d2, h g h c. Here I think it's the most critical moment where I thought she missed the knight d4. I wasn't so sure about that, but of course black can try something better, like knight d8 or knight d7. Okay, for example, knight e8 could be the most natural move Which because... Which defends g7, of course. Yes, mm. and now there's mm. no knight take e4. And white can try the move like b4, knight e3. That was my idea. Because maybe she's a little bit scary with this h-file when knight on e8. But uh, I don't believe it really works out because when you play like queen g4, double the h-file, she always has the move like f5. Oh, I can see why she was scared. I mean, it <laughs> looks scary. I would be scared if I was black Yeah, but uh, that h-file. Let's say, for example, queen g4, a5. Yeah, black needs to make some counterplay as soon as possible. And uh, uh, let's say that's uh, the easiest one. This doesn't work because mm. g7 protected by e8 knight mm. and the king f7 is quite safe. And white is lacking on this uh, light square bishop to create some c5 check, right. you know. So, mm -hmm. but of course, white can okay. do something better like uh, maybe c5 <coughs> and to play f4. This was. This hmm. was my dream position. I like your pawn structure. <laughs> <laughs> like this different color bishop, and sometimes I have queen f3, f5, and this knight that looks a bit uh, uh, unactive at this moment. Mm. And the c5 is important because otherwise, if allowed knight d6, it will be uh, it will be fine for black. Oh well, relatively fine. Right. But here, with this queen f3, e4, f5, and the black is not easy to push f pawn. Mm. So maybe knight e7 could be a better option. Mm -hmm. But here white can take on e4. S but of course if we compare the knight on d7 or h7, definitely this score is better. And uh, so maybe maybe take, take bishop h2. Mm. Right. Yeah, I thought black should have some compensation here. Mm. And after rook h1, bishop e5? Or? Maybe bishop e5, or even can you take on e4 and play knight c5? Well, that looks a bit uh, with a knight e3 check. And just be a pawn down for black, it's okay, you think? Mm, if uh, black could manage to change to different color bishop or take back the g5 point, it should be okay. Right, yeah. Or maybe she could do mm -hmm. something better here, like maybe, maybe bishop e5, I don't know. Because although there's a pawn down, but <coughs> without uh, the attack on the king side, uh, this king on e1, black is supposed to have some compensation. Mm. Or at least, uh, you know, with this threat, uh, could take the g5 pawn back and play an equalizing position. Yeah. And this knight h7, I thought she misses knight e4. Because after this move, clearly white is better. Could you tell from her body language, that she, or you think that she missed it, <laughs> or, or not? No, you know, no, no, like not really, you can tell because of the body language, just uh, because uh, if she saw this, there is no sense that she played knight h7 instead of knight e8, even though we don't know whether this knight e7 works out or not. Mm. Because even that position is more playable than knight on h7. Right. Because after this knight e4, I think the only, the only <laughs> variation probably continues the game is bishop h2. 
the same idea like you said. Okay. And the button rook g4 here. Because, uh, well, you cannot, clearly you cannot take the g5 pawn back. And probably you should. Because if take on e4, rook take e4, knight g5, probably simply rook g4. Because with the idea of f4. Mm -hmm. And this g7 could be dangerous, and also this bishop on h2 could be, I mean, locked could be, here. Could be locked in trap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So white has so many uh, threats. And uh, coincidentally, this bishop f5, bishop h5 doesn't work, <coughs> always meet rook h4. And uh, you cannot avoid change the queen, for example, be always has queen d4. Mm. So it's not, and it, white, black cannot change first because uh, in this case, uh, white's rook will go to d7 at any moment. So that's why maybe she decides to play this bishop e7. <coughs> This is the game, yeah? Yeah, this, this is, is the game, yeah. yeah. Just show for people watching at home as well, so because if bishop takes e4, queen d4, it's just that uh, this is the tactic. Ah, uh, yeah. Which, which of sure. course, is the reason that you can play knight takes e4. Yeah. OK, this if you wanted to take on e4, probably you should try to take with the bishop first, because this variation might be a bit more than, because you have this check. Uh, King f1, knight e2, I wasn't sure. Mm. Of course, you can play b4. And the take home before, take take king f1. So luckily I have the square g2. Right. So that's why the whole variation works out. Lucky you moved your g pawn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to open the door. <laughs> like 10 moves in advance. OK, so you take home e4, take home e4, bishop e7 here. Here, this rook g4 doesn't work out because you can take g5 with the bishop. And the, the piece it, black pieces now are more coordinated compared to the bishop on h2, but it ho also has a disadvantage because you don't have this tempo up to move, to force my rook to okay. move the tempo. So bishop d3, another interesting move was queen c2. I wasn't so sure which move was better, so I decided to play a more solid move because this queen on c2 looks a bit... Uh, fishy, a bit fishy. Yeah, it uh, works out because knight g5 will face queen c3. Mm. And uh, actually, first I was thinking bishop g5, queen c3, bishop f6. But then I realized if I want, I can simply play bishop d3, and it transposes to the game. Okay. And then limit the black's uh, possibility. So maybe queen c2 is a better option. Because <coughs> why not bishop d3? OK, she took on g5, but there's a chance to play the end game. There was no sense in, could, did, black, did you have the chance to exchange queens or not? Was there a uh, chance? You mean no, you stopped it, but you played bishop d3. Yeah, yeah. I played bishop d3. Yeah, no, so. but actually bishop d3 allowed to exchange queens, like bishop take e4, take on e4, and mm -hmm. uh, yes, take on d1, take on g5, and luckily I have this rook d7 move, so I believe it yeah. will be. Yeah. yeah, the position looks hopeless for mm -hmm. black. And also she might try knight g5 here, but it will face queen h5, I believe. Yeah, yeah. looks too dangerous. And also considering something interesting, like f4, I was trying to play something even more forced, mm. but uh, I'm not sure whether it works out or not. Like oh, g seven, k h eight. Yes, but uh, because the rook f seven will face bishop f six, mm. so of course uh, the move could be like king e two, mm. right? But then bishop f six. I wasn't sure sure even this line will be good for white at all, <laughs> because uh, you will have this simply rook g eight. Yeah. and to defend. But of course I can do like h 5 before, but just to show, mm. because uh, this looks quite tempting yeah, over the board. You're yeah. trying to play something f to a very beautiful and forced way. OK, so she played bishop g5. If she doesn't, if she ignores this g-pawn, she just has a lost game, does she? I mean, the knight on h7 is doing nothing. Yes, exactly. And also my play is quite clear, like uh, queen c2, queen c3, always uh, attack g7. So mm. it will be hopeless for black. And uh, bishop knight mm, g five does works out for sure. Yeah, bishop g five. Uh, uh, I thought queen c two was uh, was good because if we take here first, uh, then knight g five, and the bishop g six, <coughs> and uh, f take g six. So there is an important check here. Right. And the uh, king f one, rook d eight, rook g six, maybe rook f seven. I mean, although white has the pawn, but it's not clear because of this f3 knight, and your rook mm. is uh, 
not really going to the game, and there's rook d2, okay, yeah. and rook d3, and things like this. So of course, uh, I would hope for some attacks instead of getting a pawn to enter to a long and difficult endgame, trying to find something. So I play queen c2. And she played queen 7. It's actually very hard to suggest anything good for black because uh, my next move will be queen c3, a very direct threat. And uh, well, the bishop can go to h6, can't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to show this. Mm. And the long yeah, castle. That's the first move, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> 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 so maybe this is more like um, more stubborn to keep the game. More stubborn. Mm. Yes. Castles. Because the castle king, queen e7 here, but maybe white has 96. Important move. It's a threat knight. I mean, oh. later on that knight f5, so I believe it will mm. be quite difficult for black yeah. to hold such a position. 96 is nice. I should take with the queen, that's more precise, because it will face rook d8, knight f5. Uh, so she played queen e7. It also makes sense because if I play long castle here, so she has this important tempo to play rook d8. So because f4 will face rook d3. That's the idea. And then if I play knight g5, probably take on d3, take on mm. d3, take on g5. So if we exchange like three or two pieces in a row, then white's attack mm, has been, I mean, decreased. But you have queen c3 here, don't you? Yes, but the queen's history, I wasn't so sure, maybe there's some, okay, not enough, but maybe some, some compensation. compensation. Right. Like you'll see one square. Mm. I mean, when you're having such a powerful position, it doesn't really need to get a, uh, the material advantage and trying to go for a long game when your king's a little bit weak. So yeah. I was trying to find something else here and the knight g5 did supposed to work out for sure. Because bishop d3 cannot work here, it will face knight h7. Oh. Yeah, that's an important idea, because if queen take d3, probably knight g5, this game, long castle rook d8. Anyway, black could, uh, with a knight e6, f6 is that still playable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with an important knight h3, the game will just uh, finish. And to show us the checkmate? No, but uh, oh, it's just I mean, yeah, take just d7, f7, e7. Yeah. So she has to take knight g5, and uh, here bishop g6, it's just a uh, forced winning variation. Of course, something like long castle could also work out. And knight f3, this king e2 is an important move to mm -hmm. make the whole idea work, because if king f1, then knight g1 is unclear. I mean, probably white could, uh, because this, this doesn't work, the simple son will face f5. Yeah, the bishop is trapped here. Right. And of course, you can try something like a bishop, I wasn't sure, sure, maybe e4. But then knight h3, I mean, it's not clear whether you can win this knight or not. Still and looks very uh, dangerous for me. Yes, black. and the queen f5 will face the move like queen h4. Okay, mm -hmm. it's dangerous, but uh, considering... You need to get this rook into the game, the rook on a1, no? Yeah? Yes, exactly. So that's yeah. why I play king e2, because this uh, rook that's goes point. to g1 right. directly, although I'm temporarily losing the material, but... Yeah, because this is, seems unclear to me, especially my king goes to the king side, it's not as safe as, as the king on e2. In this, yeah. Yeah. So this king e2, yeah, with the rook h1, it's just coincidentally winning by force. Because the uh, important move is rook h4 with the idea of queen h8, rook e4. Hmm. I like that expression, coincidentally winning by force. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it feels like it ought to be winning. Because right? without so rook h1, or give black a tempo to play rook d8, or even let's say the queen on d7 is different because then you will have rook f2, queen d2, take on b2, it's unclear. Right. So why should mm, you be so you need careful? To be quick. You yeah, need to be quick, with yeah. all this rook f2 check. You need to be quick. So, of course, the queen e8. Yeah, it's different to suggest something. But as, as I said, I was speaking to someone before um, dinner, and they had a quick look at the game, mm -hmm. I think, on, I suppose, with an engine or something. And there was they said near the end, there was a chance that she had to maybe escape or put up a better defense, but I'm not quite sure. I think it was a black queen move near the end, so maybe around here. Yeah, maybe not Did here. Did you check the game with an engine? You haven't checked the game mm, yet. No, not yet. So, um, <laughs> but it really looks to me completely winning, because mm. let's say there are only a few possible moves, you have to move with the queen. And if queen d7, because I wasn't so sure to take on rook here, but at least I can try move like bishop d4 to get an important tempo to cut the d file. The idea was to queen h7, bishop c5. And if some move like mm. b6, then you could take the rook safely. So, of course, to cut this d file, and also some move like queen king d3, there won't be any perpetual. Mm. 
Right. Mm-hmm. Bishop d4 is a nice move. Uh, yeah. It's the idea because if you take the rook immediately, then what happens? Queen g4 check is. Maybe it yeah? also works out, actually. Yeah. Maybe just king d3, but queen f5 with the uh, check mm. on f6. It also works out. Perhaps, yeah. Okay. Perhaps. Yeah, so queen 8 with the last trick take on f2. So I cannot ah. play the rook immediately. I might have missed that for white, you see. <laughs> it takes f2 check. Okay, so king f8. Okay, I believe there are many other ways like to active the bishop. I think actually this person, something it was I think queen here this moment maybe. We'll have a look later. But I agree, it looks really dangerous well, for you. Mm. You, were com you were completely sure you were winning. You felt very confident here. Well, at least like 99%. I mean, it should be completely winning because it's a queen h8, a rook e4. Yeah. It's all coming by force. Right. And the queen c8, a rook e4. <laughs> because uh, uh, if queen e6, we could simply take on a8. That's why my rook didn't play on h5 before. Then there will be queen g4 champ. Yeah, I can see And that, also, yeah. just not to play the stupid move like this, it will face queen h6. Mm. That's the uh, only thing. And the queen c8, queen and uh, white could play this. Again, she's playing without this rook on a8. Ah, That's yeah. That's the point, isn't it? She's just. Uh, yeah, so it's like most of the game, both rooks are doesn't doesn't working. I mean, working to the game, and finally, because of the sacrifice, white rook goes to the battle and it uh, determines the game. Mm. Yeah, it's so beautiful diagonal the way you played this b three <laughs> on the third move. Mm. And look at that it bishop. It works out. Look at that, that bishop. Yeah. So that could be a dream position. Actually, white could achieve like this, but of course, there are many up and up and down during the middle game. I believe mm. what I did cannot be the most uh, precise move than what she reacted. This e4 is pretty good, but for the move like uh, e5 <coughs> and then knight c5, d takes c4, I wasn't so sure. Even right. the later knight h7 and seems knight to H7. me, uh, yeah, like the seriously kind of a mistake that mm. allow white's uh, clear advantage. Instead of d takes, did she resign here? She yes, um, queen c8, rook e4. Because there will be checkmate well, yeah, 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 yeah. on h8. Yeah, hard to defend. So if you had been black, do you think you would have played that pawn sacrifice with d4 if it had been different mm -hmm. colors at that moment? Yeah, at least uh, when I was thinking during the game, d4 worries me more than d takes c4. Because you're such a dynamic, aggressive player yourself. I, th I think, anyway, you, you have that reputation. Yeah, well, also d takes c4 seems like uh, just gives a gives white a comfortable position right. and you yeah. white could slowly, slowly improve. Yes. And uh, yeah, but the serious white still could be the 9h7, I believe. Do you think it's difficult for Maria? I mean, that's a great game, you found. Oh, I mean, thanks. you must feel proud of that, you know? Nice win in 30 moves. Mm -hmm. Is it difficult for Maria? I mean, she's a very strong player. Do you think psychologically it's difficult for her to face you having <coughs> played the match and lost that match to you? And do you think it's, she probably would, you know, it's not easy for her to play you, I guess. What was the score in that match, remind us? <laughs> Maybe this is a question for her, not for me. Well, I know, no. but okay, it's okay. Yeah, yeah but uh, also, actually, I play three matches in the World Championship cycle and uh, play three different opponents. Mm. Mm. And uh, I don't really believe that it matters a lot between our resorts because, for example, Hanbi, we played a lot after our match in 2011. And still, the Humby, games, are yes, yeah, yeah. games are quite uh, interesting. Mm, mm. Well, brilliant game. Um, anyone from our audience here at the, uh, in the Archie Suite like to ask you a question about that, that game? Or indeed about uh, any other chess business? Who's going to be, who's going to ask our first question? She's only a women's world champion. Yeah. <laughs> 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 this happens, we don't get this opportunity very often, you know, to ask uh, you fun. Let me, let me start with one just, just, uh, I was wondering about I was wondering about the chess analysis. You do you remember the variation where you went with the king to e2 to play rook h1 checkmate? Uh, and then you said bishop f6. Uh, yes. Unclear. Uh, what so it's what checkmate? about rook g2 there? Is that isn't that just? So that was a little bit about this. Thing. Should we go back? Can we ah, go back? Yes, the rook g2. I stole my question. <laughs> 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 That's Peter Fiddler in the audience, by I mean the way. It's a <laughs> asking it, so it's fine. Ah, that's true, exactly. Uh, I have to show it. Uh, where is it? Uh, ah, so... Peter, great to have you in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 9g5, f4, <laughs> like this. 
Ah, so it's like already made in here. Kingy too. Mm. Yeah, but here maybe. Qh5 even here. No, I mean I take on the one first, mm -hmm. and then I go knight d6. Oh, sorry. Something should be winning. Bishop f5, I guess. Or rook, uh, or rook d7. Or rook d7. Yeah. 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 yeah, bishop f5 also. Ah, so maybe f4 is uh, more precise than qh5. Mm. Mm. <coughs> yeah, right. Is something crazy like f5 possible here? Wow. Wow. <laughs> hey. Brilliant. Brilliant, is it? Maybe. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe. Okay, of course, if I don't want to try something simple, you can return. Then I have to go 96. Eh? Yes, and uh, some move like queen c2 here, or even. <coughs> I'm not sure with the c5 move whether it mm. works out. Probably it works out. With the idea of I see your C4. idea. <laughs> yes, I noticed that. <laughs> c5. It looks terrifying. Yeah. It's just bad, isn't it? Very, mm -hmm. very, very bad. Mm. So both f4 and queen 5 will work out. Mm. Mm -hmm. So again, it's knight on h7, huh? Sure, knight on h7. Cannot take on g5, mm. and so on. And any questions from, uh, other well, questions from audience? Uh, Mike? Khan, as you found out in 2012, you got to double dip. You got to win the women's prize, and you almost won the overall prize. I have a question. Is there any other tournament you can think of that you're allowed to win two prizes in? Mm, not really, actually. <laughs> so that's why I came to Gibraltar already my <laughs> third time. <laughs> A nice event here. <laughs> I believe that's also the reason to attract so many good female players because mm. uh, actually it reminds me in 2012 I'm not only win double but the triple one because I also that's won the right. prize for the junior. She won the junior prize as well. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. And are you um, too old for that now? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. And that's actually a great pity that um, finally I lost uh, the playoff with uh, Nigel. Yes. I mean, the first playoff game, I still remember clearly that I could, I had a very simple winning chance to win a piece, and I completely missed it mm. when I was playing the black in the first round. That's right. Yeah, yeah, but still, I had to admit that the tournament in 2012 was so far my best, uh, per I mean, my best uh, chess tournaments uh, in my career until this moment. Until today, it's still your best, probably, yeah? it was a fantastic result. Yeah, yeah, to, to, yeah. To considering the game's quality and my resort to the rating performance is much better than the other tournaments I've won, like even the World Championship mm. or things like that. And you had that historic game with Judith, really. Uh, well, yeah, people think like that, but uh, for me it's um, not that historical, but of course I cherish it since it's our only game, as uh, so she mm. already retired. Yes. Yeah. And uh, this will be in my chess.com news report. I did some math. You might find this interesting, both of you. Uh, right now, your countrywoman, uh, Zhu Wenjun, is winning. Should you or Zhu Wenjun win the overall prize, you'd win 38,000 <laughs> British pounds, which is 48,000 US dollars, which is the same <laughs> amount you would win at the Women's World Championship. I know you're not playing, but <laughs> Zhu Wenjun, so that's pretty cool to be able to win the exact same as the Women's World Championship is offering. They're offering 60,000, but of course, you give 20% to FIDE. So. Ah, in any case, okay. uh, I'll turn this over with that stat to a member of our audience. <laughs> well, thank you for the class. That was very good. Uh, the same as the previous one. Uh, you played the Chinese player, um, and I was surprised ah, of, your conf of your confidence. That Sicilian. Yes. He said, oh, I can defend, I can defend. <laughs> uh, that was two years ago, right? Two years yeah, ago. I remember yeah. that game. It was, yeah. it was brilliant. Uh, mm. and I thought, then I checked the game with the computer, of course, FSA, mm -hmm. and uh, there were some scary moments. Um, but here, to me, it's about the same. So maybe your biggest asset is your confidence, because you're, you're attacking, and I saw some strategic risks. But you're just kind of, OK, I play this, and then I attack here, and I <laughs> attack four, and, and OK, I win the game. 
Do you um, think that's your biggest asset? That you, you have confidence in yourself? Well, of course. I mean, a player should have confidence to play okay. before to play each of their own games. But actually, it's a coincidence. For example, yeah. in this tournament, I played four games, and only this game there. I mean, it's quite uh, aggressive, and there's some up and downs. So my previous two wins are actually quite solid and positional, like slowly improving. And uh, so maybe because I know that today we will do this master class, so I wanted to try something, you know, different <laughs> to m to make the things more interesting. Because I believe it will be more. Uh, how to say, uh, for spectators to watch a uh, long and positional winning game like mm. by very, very careful <laughs> techniques. Um, and then last time, yeah, I was showing a game with my teammate Yang Yi. He was actually, mm. he's actually also playing here this time. Yes. And that Sicilian, I was black and I was trying to defend because uh, he's the one who trying to push, pu push pressure and uh, attack on the king side. Same like this, but that was Sicilia where I have counterplay on the queen side. So luckily, I remember I sacrificed the pawn at some moment and uh, finally um, solved it in the end game where the position are more or less blocked. Mm, good memory. So you remember that masterclass clearly. Very good. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Another question for you, Fan, from our studio audience here in Gibraltar. Hi, Yifan. Um, Hi. I've been living and playing chess in China for about ten years now, and. Uh, I'm often quite disappointed that there's really no culture of amateur chess or really any FIDE opens in any city in China. Do you have any insight into why this is or, or can you see this changing in the future? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Actually, that was a serious question. I mean, mm. of course, China now, the chess atmosphere is not as good as the Euro especially the European countries or maybe also the States, where you have a lot of um, like uh, interesting tournaments uh, for chess fans that's quite important also the thing i wanted to improve i mean promote in china because now the situation is like we have many chess clubs but that was only for the young kids for the young people who wanted to mm, become a professional chess player so they provide the training so i said we don't have enough like the chess cafe or things like that could provide a uh, adult chess fans to enjoy chess, to communicate chess. So maybe it also because of the culture, because uh, although the chess was originated from Asia country, okay. Asian countries, but actually it became the modern chess in Spain. So that's why I believe in European countries you have more traditional cultures for chess, and in China previous years was Chinese chess and also Go. Only recent mm. years chess became more popular than before. Yeah. So, but you don't have so many tournaments uh, international, like anything, not like Gibraltar, but like uh, mm, no. open <laughs> tournaments. Well, you know, in the world, we don't have the second Gibraltar. Oh right, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, but in China, yeah, uh, indeed, that's true. But we you must have chess sponsors, there must be. Oh, well, no? sponsors, it's not easy to get in China, only speaking, even. Yeah, especially for the chess tournament and also for the players as well. Mm. Uh, so we have like a few or maybe one or two uh, strong invitational tournaments. Okay, back to 10 years ago, there was a tournament in Taiyuan. That was the first, uh, or maybe not first, but from my career, uh, I mean, my chess period, it could be the first uh, strong invitational tournament. And uh, later on, there was a tournament in Nanjing where we invited many top players. And uh, now we have another tournament in Danzhou, but that's all for the professional chess players. Um, mm. This year, we also had uh, like one or two open, but uh, didn't attract uh, so many foreign players. So I believe one thing because of the location, because China is like far away from the chess center from Europe. So when the players wanted to play, they need they need to consider the troubles. They need to adjust the jet lag. So it's not so easy to play there. Just like for us to play in Europe, actually. Right. Yeah. yeah, and uh, also maybe because of the mm, how to say, like um, public. Uh, how to say, just like uh, um, there are not so many people knows about the open tournament so far. Mm. Yeah, so I believe that could also be the area that uh, the if you want to <coughs> try to promote chess in China. All right. Any uh, uh, mic on? Uh, last year's world championship match had a few innovations, a few new ideas. It was held in a major city. They uh, charged money for uh, extended access. Yeah. Uh, they had virtual reality. Mm -hmm. Did you watch the match? And would you like to see any of those features brought to the Women's World Championship? Yeah, of course, I thought that would be good. Uh, I heard about this virtual reality, uh, of course, uh, although I didn't really try, try that. And uh, to 
purchase for the tickets, I thought that makes sense because uh, if we're considering all the major sports now like football or whatever, they really purchase for the spectators. Although for chess it's something different, but I believe when it goes to some sudden moment, it also makes sense and also it will make spectators to feel that they're, they're coming not to only watch uh, you know, chess game is like watching a show and to see how um, players' brain works in a very quiet atmosphere. Um, I think that's a, that could be like the first step to make chess in a commercial way. Mm. Yifan, I'll just ask you, I'm sure there's other questions to come, about some, um, uh, I think I believe you recently completed your university studies, or was that already a, a while ago now? In China, have you com you've finished, finished all your studies yeah, and everything? Like I was going to last year, last last year right? Okay, yeah. right. Okay, I was going to ask you what the future holds for you. I know you played a lot of chess last year, um, lots of tournaments, and uh, now you're here. But we know you're not playing in Tehran, and, and that sort of cycle of things is mm. looks like you're not yeah. really part of anymore. No. Uh, right. Okay. <laughs> um, but what about your chess career from here on? Um, um. Are you or are you thinking of moving into something non-chess? Uh, no, I mean, for recent years, uh, for the foreseeable future, of course, I will also focus on chess like what I did in the past 10 years. Um, but now the season is a little bit different as uh, I dropped out from Grand Prix and it seems like I will not join the World Championships, Women's World Championship cycle if they keep the format like this. Right. So in this case, uh, I'm kind of pushing myself a bit harder since I need to play better in the open section in case to have more tournaments because uh, if we are not considering the women's tournaments at all, there are only like open tournaments and strong imitational tournaments. Right. So where I really need to be a, be a bit more stronger in case to adjust for that. So you're full of ambition? <laughs> of course, uh, I, would, uh, uh, I would try my best to try mm. to improve and uh, I thought it could be the right moment. As uh, if you see from my rating, it's like uh, there are always a few years um, kind of around in what kind of level, like 2600, then 2650. Now it's at this moment, so I hope there will be a re real progress in the near future. And uh, considering 2017, at least for first half of the year, I will focus on chess. Right. But probably at some moment, I will continue my master's study as well. Yeah. Okay, and what is your master's going to be in, or what, what is it in? Um, not fully decided yet. Not yet. Okay. Yeah, so my major in bachelor was uh, international relations, but now I'm kind of chan changed my mind to a more practical way. It could be like uh, public policy or um, bus business administration or sports um, management. I mean, more s right. some some area that's more practical and might. Uh, um, how to say, might adjust my future career. So I mean, non chess career. Right, you're sort of building a second career uh, mm. or possibility, let's say. Well, I cannot say exactly the second uh, second career. Actually, my plan was also coordinated, I mean, um, mm. connected with chess, even though at some moment I won't be the professional chess player anymore because uh, I'm pl I've been in this world more than 15 years. Mm. So there's uh, like, um, you know, connections. Uh, I but you're still so young. How old are you now? <laughs> um, almost 23. Almost 23 and you've achieved so much. It's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> almost 23. <laughs> yeah, my first day in February. So in February, almost. all right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ifan, you told me in November of 2015 you wanted to go to Harvard. Is that still a goal of yours? <laughs> yeah, mm, kind of. Uh, it's not easy to get there. Uh, I mean, not because of something, just because of my... Uh, English uh, proficiency, I mean, we need to pass the both tests for GRE and TOEFL in case to reach the minimum level. And that uh, could be my mm, main worries now since I'm playing a lot of chess tournaments, so I don't really have time to prepare for that. Mm, so that's why for the near future probably I won't be able to study there. And also, I'm also considering if I really study there, it takes uh, so much time and energy, probably I can't balance chess as well as what I did now. Mm. Interesting. Any questions? Uh, any questions online? Perhaps, Pete. Anyone watching the show at home have any questions? Um, at one point, um, Judith made it to the top ten. The, yeah. the male. Uh, do you see yourself achieving that, uh, or not at all, or is it something you'll see? 
Yeah, that would be wonderful if one day I could achieve like that. But uh, honestly speaking, at this moment, uh, I have to admit there's still like a long way to go, because my rating, the highest place in my rating, could be like something sixty around. And we all know the difference from sixty fifty to twenty or ten. Mm -hmm. So that would be. Difficult and also considering the different uh, period because uh, when Jutta enter, of course she's extremely strong, but at that moment the engine is not as powerful as nowadays. Which means if a player working very hard has intuition, uh, could be very strong, but at this moment really you need to be very hard working to know to know a bit more deeper on chess. Mm, so at this moment, I just trying. I mean, trying my best to, to move a little bit. Uh, uh, I mean, a mo mo little bit more. Um, how to say, more faster. I mean, to be better, to improve than previous years. That would also already be good. And who do you train with? You have, or is it? Uh, can you tell us? Any? Do you have any special training program or people you train with in China? Uh, in China, not really. Not really. Yeah, because. Uh, um, in China, it's like we have the national team's coach and chief coach who was also doing some political work. So nowadays, the top players in China normally train by themselves or have the, like small groups, but mm. all is just uh, by themselves. Right. That's the same for you, is it? Yeah. Really? Yeah, same yeah. for me, like already for at least um, four or five years or mm. seven, six or seven years. Wow, of, yeah. of, of course, uh, I benefit a lot when I was young. Like uh, when I'm growing up, I could have went to the national training place at a very young age to mm. learn and play with my teammates who was already very strong at that moment. But sooner or later, for example, like I won the first time world champion or a bit later on, it's like um, um, we don't really get so, m so much training helps, uh, the professional helps from the I mean the national team. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm remembering you found just talking to you now, listening to your answers about maybe I'm getting this completely wrong about a master class. It might be someone else about how they started playing chess, about finding a children's book in a library with uh, a cartoon book or something with chess. Am I completely <laughs> wrong? Is that you or not? Uh, well, uh, it's n it's not me who s uh, started chess in that way, no. but uh, that's me. That when I was in the national training place at uh, maybe nine years old, okay, already kind of semi-professional player, right. and uh, I got attracted by the cartoon book instead of training right. and uh, to watch all the professional books. Right, okay. <laughs> and at that moment, uh, I remember the. The, the staff who working at the library told me you should be working hard on chess itself, mm. not get fascinated by all the books, but uh, that could be a kind of relaxed way. Right, okay. We have a question from Andrew in our audience. Hi there. Um, you say it's hard working when you play chess. Um, how many sort of hours a day would you put in? And how would you, how do you split it up? Is it mainly openings or do you, how much do you split between openings, little game? and end games? Uh, good question. Actually, now it's a moment that uh, probably I need to think more about my training because the last four years I was uh, um, playing tournaments and also studying as a regular student in one of the top universities in China. So in that case, uh, we really need to balance both things. So I cannot guarantee any of the training time. It, it's mainly like this, for example, if I'm facing some important tournaments, probably like uh, five or ten days in advance, I might train more on chess. But if I'm facing like the midterm or the final exam of the university, probably I cannot find any single time for chess. So it really depends. I mean, it's like a different period. And talking about training when I was young, like before entering to university, not very hard, probably like four or five hours a day, uh, except the weekends. And at that moment, uh, not only the opening, but also the middle game, sometimes the end games as well. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, I believe it's different because in reason for five years, the engine really developed so faster. So probably we need to spend more time trying to adjust on this uh, new atmosphere. Are you very, very famous in China, Yifan? I, I assume <coughs> you must be, not? You're, are you on TV sometimes, or on the um, radio, and newspapers? Everyone knows who you are? Well, in sports field, uh, more or less, yes. Mm. But if for the people who doesn't, uh, I mean, follow the sports at all, so I'm just a normal person. Really? Yeah. <laughs>
If we stop 100 people in the street in Shanghai or Beijing and ask them who is who you from, they don't well, know who you are? I found it coincidentally, actually, maybe because of the chess is a kind of sport that the people are difficult to follow the live. So many of the people, they know my names, but when they met me, they said, ah, this is the first time I, you know, ma match to yourself with your name, with your face. Right. So, oh, I met so many situations like this. It's like they heard my t names so often, but they didn't know, uh, for example, like what, I, what I'm looking look like. like. Yeah, for example, okay. like we met in the streets, mm. they even didn't know whom right. they met. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, of course, I hope in, 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 in case you see this matter, chess could be promoted in a more, uh, how to say, general way. Let's say probably some more interesting format in case to attract the people to watch the live, to know the chess players, not only because of their games. I mean, I'm thinking now of a TV. I mean, uh, I'll tell you for why, because um, cause I'm friends with Judith as well, and she, um, I know she has a TV series in Hungary on Hungarian TV, and mm -hmm. she sent me some sort of links, and I've seen mm -hmm. some episodes. And in fact, some of the Gibraltar chess festival last year mm -hmm. was shown on Hungarian TV, which we're very happy about, wow. on her show, with other people, it was right. really her, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that you'd be great to do a TV show in China as well, <laughs> with sort of showing kids how to play and talking about your career and yeah, of course. things like that. Would you, would you like to do that? Would you do that if it was suggested, if you could? Yeah, of course. Like Why that? not? But yeah, maybe not only the program like this, because uh, like this, of course, uh, the people who are interested in chess, they would watch. But uh, I'm also talking about the more general way to attract the people maybe who doesn't know how to move the pieces. For example, you could uh, let the chess players to talk the culture of chess, something like this. Chess, or even yeah. to play some like a... Uh, like a bullet, like uh, for example, uh, one minute chess game. In this case, even the people doesn't know, they were amazed by how fast the chess player could play the mm. whole game, so like 60 moves. Because I remember when I published a very small video in a social social app, just like uh, when I'm playing bullet one minute with my friend, and they just amazed to see that probably under eight or 10 seconds, we play like 20 or 30 moves. Mm. So I believe that could also be another way to promote chess. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so you'd be very happy if that kind of thing. Yeah, of course. Were uh, so that's yeah. also part of my mission. Besides a professional chess player, right. because we benefit from chess. Of course, we want to um, to get more people know about chess mm. to see how chess could. Uh, Mm, but you're like such a superstar. You're self. like uh, you should have an agent. You should have someone doing this for you. So you found you're doing this TV show this year and in the spring and in the you need to be you know don't you think? Yeah, of course. I uh, hope we could get more chances, more opportunities. And look like at Magnus. That. Look at all the things Magnus does and his sponsors and the you know yeah, movies great. and everything else. Yeah, that's wonderful. Of so course why not I for hope. you, fun? Why not for you? Maybe we should try to how to say promote women's chess. I could be your agent. I could be your agent. Thank you. <laughs> I do that. Yeah. Can I? Maybe we'll try to do it in Japan. We can start it here. Yeah, sure. Good <laughs> <Yeah. Good> idea. <laughs> Any final questions to wrap up um, this fantastic masterclass? Anyone? Anyone in the room? Here, um, there's two categories of players. I think S some players they don't want to know their opponent of the next day in an open tournament. They mm -hmm. want to check in the morning. Mm -hmm. Others want to know already right now. What about you? Oh, doesn't matter. Actually, it makes no difference. Whatever I know it today or tomorrow morning. Anyway, I will just start to prepare a little bit tomorrow. But can I tell you your opponent? <laughs> uh, yes, of course. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> so not only me, I believe they all are He's expecting playing this. Is she so playing another woman? You're playing not. You're not playing another woman. No, I thought there's no <laughs> other player <laughs> like the same score as me. You're playing black against Mickey Adams. So please, wow. com oh, please nice. comment on that. <laughs> comment. Uh, how are you going to prepare? Black against Mickey. Oh, actually, nice. we played in Alfman last last uh, last uh, October. So you played black. Right. The same, yeah. Against Mickey? Yes. And also On the Isle of Man? Yes. Right. And also we played here in 2012 where mm. I got a white. Mm. <laughs> so is that a good pairing or you don't mind who you play, do you? Mm, yeah, I don't really mind. I'm just mm. trying to play every single game as, uh, as best as I can. Mm. All right. Anyone else, Mike, or anyone else? Otherwise, we're going to wrap up, I think. I'll just ask one final one. Uh, your Olympiad gold medalist teammate, congratulations. A Ju Wenjin yes. is playing next month, and I do not know how the Chinese team works. Will you help prepare her before or during the match, since you are not playing, excuse me, before or during the knockout tournament, since you are not playing yourself? But knockout starts like just a few days after this event. Correct. Yes. Will you help her during the match? Uh, match? No, but it's not a oh, match, it's a knockout. Sorry, I mean, knockout, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. we 
apply the, I mean, myself I apply like a few times. And also this time in the Highland there will be like uh, the other Chinese players as well. Actually, there will be a, like a small group. I don't really know about that since uh, I already dropped out for the, uh, for mm -hmm. the circle. And, um, so you have no official role in as mm, far as helping no, any of the Chinese women? No, definitely not. Okay. Yeah. Ethan, you well, of course, if someone wanted to uh, hire me and to do some work, um, <laughs> <laughs> please do do. But probably they thought that I'm not that, that experienced enough and uh, could be like a coach because I'm also playing my own tournaments. Probably I will think about that in the future. But even if the Women's World Championship cycle were organized along the same lines as the men's, or, or the World Championship, I should say, rather, of course, you would still be defending your title and you would... Yeah, of course, if yeah. the format could be changed. Though, um, um, I'm, I'm definitely wanted to stay in this circle because I thought that uh, while the top rated player is keeping to play the World Champion cycle will be generally will be good for chess as a mm. sport because uh, uh, for example, okay, Adrian is quite strong but since uh, she didn't play the World Championship cycle, although I understand but mm. still mm, seeing from a promotion part probably we could try to do something different at this moment. Let's say, for example, the <coughs> men's cycle with Magnus is definitely more attractive, more interesting. Yeah. So I hope the women's cycle, uh, I mean, could be the same as men's. I've spoken to many people and they all sympathize with you and they all think that, that you, have, you should be able to defend your title as Magnus defends his <laughs> in yeah. a match with a challenger. In, uh, yes, not because uh, if we have to qualify through some knockout system or, or win a Grand Prix in order mm. to, to get back to where you are now. Yeah, knockout makes sense because it allows more players a chance to play an elite event, is especially for the player like from Africa, or, uh, African countries, yes. or from the undeveloped regions where the chess is not, not so popular. So it could encourage them quite mm. a lot. So I really support this cycle, but this cannot be the one to determine the world champion. It could be something yeah, else, like the, world the World Cup, Cup or something else, else, but not... Yeah, yeah. that would make more sense. Of course, yeah. Yeah, so that's why I really wanted to stay there. Unfortunately, I cannot. Right, that's yeah. a great pity, yeah. Yeah. It is. Well, I think we better wrap up there. Yifan, that's been a fantastic uh, game that you showed us. And thank, thank you. you very much for your time and for all the for wonderful sure. things you've, uh, you've shared with us this evening. Oh. Thank you, and best of luck thank in the rest you. of the tournament. Thank you.